Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. What a great crowd. You all having fun? Yeah. I thought so. Yeah, this is a great event, and it's wonderful to be here with so many of you. I'll try to speak slow enough that the translation works, okay? It's amazing to me how you all gather together from so many nations, so many tongues, so many backgrounds, so many cultures. It's incredible, and uh, it's a testament to all of the leaders who uh, want to be part of this. It's a volunteer army. Nobody gets paid to run OTG, right? It's something that we all do because we see the greater good and we want to be part of it. And I'm grateful to be uh, part of it with you, to be friends with you. Uh, let's give a big hand to the organizers. Oh, a lot of work to put this together. Thank you so much. And I really believe it's the women who put it all together. The men are not that organized. So hands up, hats off to all the women. Thank you very much. So when I receive my topic for this uh, talk tonight, I want you to know that I've never really done this presentation before. How's that? <laughs> so we don't know what's going to happen. Anything could happen. Anyway, I've thought a lot about being a finisher uh, over all of these years, what that means to be a finisher. And I've had certain thoughts about it. I've mentioned it a few times in some of the talks in some places about finishing and th so forth. But it gave me the opportunity this time to really kind of dig in and to uh, read about it, to think about it, to think about how it relates to our business, what we do here, and how it relates to our lives. So I think it's a really important topic. It's something that I've learned a lot by studying and preparing for this and something that I hope that you'll, you'll take away tonight and you'll be able to apply this going forward, not only in New Skin, but in your lives too. All right, so um, let's talk about a few finishers. Uh, how about Mahatma Gandhi? Uh, Gandhi spent his entire life fighting for the freedom of India. Uh, he was jailed many times. He started this process in South Africa, and he moved to India, and uh, eventually was successful through nonviolent protest, fast that would last for weeks and months sometimes, to uh, change the tide, to change the course of a whole country. And uh, he stuck with it. He stuck with it all the way to the end until somebody took his life. I think about other finishers. I think about people like Nelson Mandela. And Mandela had both supporters and detractors. But you can't not recognize that he had a mission in mind. And he wanted to remove apartheid from South Africa. And he spent 27 years in a prison trying to, uh, you know, foster the resistance, try to create something that would change that entire country. And there's other people who are not politicians, but they're people that have had huge impacts on our world. People like Mother Teresa, a person who dedicated her whole life, who set up an entire order to serve the poorest of the poor all over the world and spent her life doing that very thing and uh, it's just an amazing example to me of service, of doing what others can't do for themselves, looking after the poorest and the weakest among us, right? What a great thing she did with her life. And I look at all of these people as finishers, people who had something that was not an easy task, something that I'm sure many people told them it was impossible, and yet they stuck with it. And they continued to press forward and they finished. And they finished really strong. And their finishing changed the world. So it's important, I think, for us to think about some of these things. Now, I've tried to put these in some sense of order. Thank you for the last minute rearrangement of my slides. I went through them again and I thought, this is going to be confusing if we don't try to group them together. But hopefully we have them in the right place. Okay, 
So uh, it's easy to start something, right? It's much harder to finish. Uh, do you find that in your own life? It's easy, isn't it? We find a project, we find something that looks really cool, we get all excited about it, and then uh, maybe a month in or two months in, we start to lose the energy, start to lose the excitement. Why is that? It's because it's easy to start. It's easy to get excited, but it's not easy to finish. It's not easy to do the mundane task that it takes to do it over and over again throughout many months and even many years to take it to the very end. And I'm sure that Mother Teresa or Gandhi or Mandela uh, had a lot of days that they didn't think it was very fun. A lot of days where they were just trying to press forward, just trying to keep the commitment, right? And so this is an important thing. It is what separates successful people from those people who don't really accomplish their goals, right? It's that consistency. So this is a little bit about it, right? It's so easy to dim dismiss the value of making slightly better decisions on a daily basis. Sticking with the fundamentals is not impressive. Falling in love with boredom is not sexy, okay? Getting 1% better isn't going to make the headlines. What a great quote from James Clear. It's uh, exactly true, isn't it? So many times we get excited about something and we view success as doing something that's earth shattering, that gets the headlines, you know, we're on the front page, right? Uh, that rarely happens and when it comes to people that are finishers, okay? When we see the final result, it didn't happen in a day or a week or a month. It happened over a lifetime in many cases. And so it de depends what you want, right? Depends what your objective is and what you're trying to accomplish. But whatever it is, there's going to be these tasks that we have to put up with all the time. And I hope today, as we go through this, we'll learn a little bit more about it. This is Sir Bradley Wiggins. I want to tell you a story really quickly about cycling in Great Britain. This will underscore this point that I'm trying to make. Uh, there's a coach... Uh, Dave, let's see, I'm trying to remember his last name. I should remember that. <laughs> I'll think of it in just a moment. Anyway, this coach for the Great Britain cycling team, it's called Team Sky, was hired in 2010. And he was given the charge to try to win the Tour de France at some point. Great Britain had never had anybody win the Tour de France, ever, in the entire history of that, uh, that race. And so he was uh, assigned this task and he decided, okay, I'm going to set a goal that within five years we'll have somebody from, from Great Britain win the Tour de France. He didn't have to wait five years. He did it in three years. When this gentleman, uh, Bradley Wiggins, rode across the finish line and won the Tour de France in 2012. The next year, Chris Broom, Froome, I think it is, won it again the second time uh, for Great Britain, two years in a row. And in between that, they had the Olympics in 2012, and Great Britain's Team Sky won 70% of the medals. Okay, they had never really had that kind of a result, ever. And the last 10 years has been said that it's been the greatest 10 years in cycling history for any country. That's pretty amazing when you take a country of 60 million people, right? It's wet most of the time, hard to ride outside, not slip and fall and kill yourself. Right? And yet they put together this winning strategy. Do you know what the coach did? He said, if I can focus on making 1% improvements, just 1%, if I can have everybody get 1% better, and they can do that consistently week after week after week, then we can do it. And it wasn't just getting 1% faster on their times, okay? They first started looking at diet. They looked at the nutrition that was going in. They started looking at the, the seat on the bike and the overall weight of the bike, the aerodynamics of the bike, of the helmet they were wearing. They started looking at their training regimes and everything they looked at, they said, how do we make this 1% better? Just 1% better, okay? And then they started looking in places that nobody ever thought to look. They started looking at the pillows that people were sleeping on that were the cyclists. And they started taking those pillows with them to every hotel they would go to. They talked about washing their hands regularly so they didn't get infections and didn't get sick. 
so they could train better and, and be further ahead, right? And this was the depth that they went to in looking how they could improve just 1%, just 1% every week. Well, that little 1% compounds over time, doesn't it? That's exactly what happens to it, and it becomes really, really powerful. This is a, a little graph. <clears throat> when we are 1% better today, we don't really notice it, do we? You know, in the short run, being 1% better or 1% worse isn't going to be very noticeable. But when you start to realize that these can compound over time, either you can get 1% better every week or you can get 1% better every day, and with that compounding, when we go out a year, two years, five years, we're talking a huge difference between the results that people have. And it's not always just improving 1% to the upside. Sometimes it's just eliminating mistakes we make on the downside. And that can sometimes be as effective as making the improvements on the upside, right? We eliminate bad habits. We eliminate negative thinking. Okay, we eliminate some things we shouldn't be eating. You know, these kinds of things can make a big impact long term by removing negatives as well as improving the positives that we're working on to achieve. So that's, uh, that's just a way to think about it. Whoops, that was too fast, okay? So a race is run, run one step at a time. You know, sometimes we just want to go to the result, don't we? It's like we hear about new skin, we go, I'm in, I want to be a team elite. I'm going to be a team elite tomorrow. <laughs> no, you probably won't be a team elite tomorrow because it's a long race, you know? It's not necessarily a sprint. It's a marathon, right? I've tried to sprint the whole marathon. That's hard. So, you know, realize it takes time. It's a process. When you think about climbing Mount Everest, do people just say, well, I'm just going to summit? You know, I'm just going to go to the top? No. What does it take to climb Mount Everest? That's a huge goal that we could set for ourselves, but what does it really take to do that? Most climbers have climbed lots of other mountains before they get to Mount Everest. Smaller mountains, sometimes a lot smaller mountains. When they go to Everest, they go to base camp and they try to acclimate for a couple of weeks, get used to the altitude, and then they make some attempts up to the first step and then back, up to base, you know, the next base camp and then back, and then up to the next base camp and back, and they do this over weeks and months sometimes before they can then decide. And it takes a lot of other factors. You know, the weather's got to be close to perfect on the day that you decide to summit. Because if you get trapped up there, it probably means your life. So when we stop and think about any of these really significant things that we do, it's going to take time. It's going to take one step at a time. And in fact, there's no real shortcut to success. A lot of people want to short circuit it or think they can figure out a better or different way. And sometimes there are definitely improvements we can make. But what I see in New Skin, especially for people that are building large, substantial organizations that can sustain them financially for the rest of their lives, and organizations they can actually will to their children, uh, it's a long-term process to build very consistent, large, stable organizations. So I haven't seen any shortcuts. You know, if you want to put in more work, then maybe you can shorten the time, but it's going to take the same kind of contacts, the same time, number of presentations, the same time frame to accomplish those things. All right, so looking at this, success then, kind of in summarizing this point, success is a few simple disciplines practiced every day. We just take these simple things, we just repeat them every day, over and over again, and we try to get better at them while we're doing them. And failure is simply a few errors in judgment repeated every day. And so what we want to do is we don't want to keep repeating the errors, right? We want to try to go up instead of going down. And so this is why when you start seeing things not going correctly, it's time for a consultation, all right? It's time for sitting down with your upline and saying, all right, I don't, I don't feel like it's completely right. Something's not going as well as it should here, you know. 
I want you to work with me. I want you to coach me. I want you to look at what I'm doing and help me make a correction. Because what happens over time, if we let things go the wrong direction, they can compound in the wrong direction. And so we end up with a much bigger gap. It's much harder to get back on track if we don't correct mistakes early and then we let them go and go. That's a problem, right? So this is where consultation comes in. And this is part of, you know, being a, a, part of being a team player, is that what we do is I like to have a consult with my new leaders every month. And I like to do it on the second or third of the new month because we can talk about what happened last month. We can talk about what went well or what didn't go well. And then we can talk about what we're going to change for this coming month and how we're going to make things better and different. And those kind of corrections that happen frequently, they correct people onto the right path and it lets them compound their success quicker, okay? So those are things that we can help them do as uplines. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, about mastering these habits. We want to do these consistent habits all the time, right? And you're going to see why this is so important. So there is power in small wins and slow gains. It doesn't have to be meteoric. It doesn't have to be the brightest star in the universe, okay? In fact, it's almost better that it's not. I see a lot of people come into our business, sometimes they'll have really rapid success, and they're not mature enough in the business to sustain it. And then they get discouraged because it doesn't always go that fast. And they start to think, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong now? You know, it's not moving the way it used to move for me. You may have fast success, you may have success that comes later in your journey. But if I take a line over the course of my career from the day I started, 28 years later, I mean, I can smooth that, those peaks and valleys out. I can make a pretty straight line out of the start to the, to the point we're at today. So don't get too excited about early success. Don't get too discouraged about not much success early on. If you're committed for the long term and you're willing to continue doing these consistent things, then eventually it's going to happen, right? It's kind of like winding a spring, you know? If you just keep doing those consistent things all the time, it's like you put more and more pressure on this spring. You're just winding it down and winding it down. And there's going to become a point where that spring is going to get let loose and you're going to see your business jump, right? And then you'll tighten it again. And you'll jump again at some point to the next level in the development of your business. This is why average speed yields above average results. It's that compounding effect of learning those good, consistent habits, right? It's why the system is greater than the goal. We've had some wonderful presentations today about the value of System 7. And I, I see a lot of people go, oh, System 7, it's like I, I can't get it, I can't relate to it, you know? Or it doesn't work in social media, or some crazy comment I hear like this, right? This is the business, you guys. All System 7 is are the seven things that we should be doing every day. That's what it is, right? It's seven things we do, and it's seven habits we form. That's really what it is, right? And it's just basic. It's basic stuff to be successful. And when you have a system in place, what happens is the system is what guides those daily actions. The daily repetitive actions that can compound they compound every day, that 1% improvement, right? It leads to success like the Great Britain cycling team had because we're just looking for those little improvements over time, right? And the system is more important than the goal. The goal you have to have, I'm a big goal setter. I'm the only person that I know of that has my goals written down for age 90. I'm the only one I know of, okay? So I do all that. I mean, I totally believe in goal setting. I believe that you can program your subconscious mind with those goals and repeatedly reading those and putting those in your brain. I believe it changes your thinking, okay? And we'll talk more about that in just a minute, about why it does that, okay? I believe in goal setting. But the system, the daily consistent action is what allows you to actually accomplish those goals, right? And that's why we say the system is even greater than the goal, because it's what gets you there to the goal. And so this is why mastering habits is more important than achieving just one outcome or a certain outcome, right? So these habits are what create change. Many of you have 
heard me do my presentation on change, right? Thoughts are first. You gotta change the way you think. That's why we come to events like this weekend. We make a sacrifice, we pay money, we get on an airplane, we get a hotel room, we come in these rooms. And that's why the MCs are saying to you, stay in your seats. Oh, you have to go to the bathroom? Good, pee your pants, that's okay. <laughs> because it's more important you listen to what you're gonna hear in this room, okay? Yeah, that's why they say that. You don't wanna spend all the effort and time and come here and then be outside half the time, okay? You wanna be in the environment because in the environment there's energy. There's a different energy in this room right now. I don't know if you can feel it or not. But that type of energy, when you put yourself in a position to experience that, changes the way you think. It changes your vision. It changes the scope of how big you see the business for yourself. You listen to other people who you can identify with that are like you are or came from the same place you came from. And you watch them on stage and it gives you license to think that you can do the same thing. Right? And that's why it changes who we are. We literally can change who we are in events like this. It happened to me when I was being recruited by my brother-in-law. The end of my whole evaluation process, he convinced me to get on an airplane and fly to a new skin meeting in Southern California. And I did that early, early Saturday morning. And I sat in the back of that room, the last row. Somebody like one of you up there. And I didn't want anybody to see me. I just wanted to sit on the back row and listen. And I listened to probably five or seven presenters in the morning session before the break for lunch. And I was done. I listened to those people and I thought, if that person can do it, I can do it. And I thought, if that bozo can do it, I can do it. <laughs> You're probably saying that about me right now, okay? <laughs> and I just thought to myself, I can tear this apart. I was so energized by the lunch break. And the second half of the day, I didn't even listen. I was just writing down names, like literally hundreds of names before I got on the airplane to go home. I was so energized, man. I could feel this energy building inside my body. It's like I was a caged tiger, you know. It's like, I'm going to start this on Monday, you know. Watch out all you people on my list. Because that's how I felt about it. I was so excited about the future and what could happen with this company. So those are things to think about. So let's talk about... The, the system and the goals, right? Sometimes we got this goal, it's our target, we're shooting for it. And sometimes we forget about the system, you know, just doing those basic things all the time that help us achieve these actual goals that we've set, right? So just to finalize this point, okay? It's really important. This is kind of an interesting thing. When we look at goals, this is some interesting research that they did at the University of Chicago. And these are two psychology professors, and this just got published in the Harvard Business Review last year. So it's very interesting information, right? It's, it talks about to go versus to date. If you look at the top of the slide up there, what does it mean to go versus to date? When we look at goals that we've written down, objectives we want to accomplish, there's a journey involved in accomplishing, from getting from where we're starting to accomplishing the goal. And what a lot of people do is they'll look at what they've done so far. That's called to date, okay? So they look what they've accomplished to date. And they look back over the landscape they've traveled, and they say, look, look at how far I've come. That's really great. This is really super. And the researchers say that that tends to make you more satisfied. And it doesn't leave you as motivated to go out and accomplish the rest of the journey and actually get to the end destination of your goal. And so what they suggest you should do, and they, they did this in this study, is look at what's left to go versus what you've done to date. So look forward. Look at the landscape you still have to travel over, okay? And realize where you've got to go. And make a decision that that is what you're going to do. And keep focused on the goal. In fact, they said that they noticed inside of some companies when the company had an objective and they would have kind of a mid-objective a mid party or the management team would reward the, the employees kind of halfway through the process, that it distracted everybody. 
that all of a sudden it lessened their motivation to get there. They said, you can applaud people, but don't give them the reward until, they're at the very, until they actually did it, <laughs> until they actually achieved the actual goal, right? So this is an interesting thought as I've thought about it. I think this is why looking at your goals and rereading your goals and posting them where you can read them every day, putting them on your phone as your screensaver, that's your, your goal, you see it every time you touch your phone, okay? That reinforces in our mind what we've got to do. And here's the mechanism that happens. When we kind of ignore how far we've come, okay, and we'll talk about some of the things on that in just a moment. When we ignore that as far as achieving our goal and we look forward, okay, there's what we've got to do. Here's how far we have to go. Then all of a sudden, our minds start to realize that separation. Your mind starts to realize there's a gap and your mind starts to get more focused. You start to get more earnest in what you're trying to accomplish, okay? You have more motivation. You're more driven. You get more focused. And these are the results that they noticed in this study that they did a year ago at the University of Chicago. And I've noticed that in my own life. And I've always tried to stay, you know, focused on my goals. You've heard me say this if you've listened to any of my talks before on goal setting that, you know, setting a goal is like magic. People have a hard time believing that you can just write it down, and if you write it down and read it every day, and then take action, that's the system, right? Take action every day, you can accomplish anything. And I believe that. I've written down some crazy goals. When I wrote them down, I'm like, I don't know if I should be writing this. But I just wrote them down anyway. And it's amazing what you can accomplish because that changes your thinking. You start reading those goals, you start to see things differently. You start to believe that you can achieve things that a year ago you never thought were even possible for yourself. And I'm here to tell you today that it's all about changing your mind, changing the way you think, allowing yourself to believe that it's really big and it's really possible, okay? Now, Sometimes what we do is we sabotage ourselves. You know, we actually go back to bad negative behaviors because we start to feel really good. In fact, we're accomplishing our goals and we're feeling so good about where we're going that we're not used to feeling that good. It's not a normal feeling to feel that good. It's more normal to feel anxious and to feel like things aren't going that good. So we kind of subconsciously sabotage ourselves and we go back to that basic negative or, or uh, failure feeling, okay? You don't want to do that. You need to give yourself permission to go out there and reach your potential and be as successful as you can be. Are you willing to give yourself permission? Yes. You got to love yourself enough, guys, to know that when you do that, it's not just going to be good for you. In this business, it's going to be good for a lot of people, right? That's the power of what we have here in our business. All right. So a couple of things here. Focusing on tasks that are remaining will keep you more motivated, right? Just in summary here. When you focus on how far you have left to go, the motivation becomes heightened. It's stronger, okay? To-go thinking helps us to tune into the presence of the discrepancy, right? Between where we are and where we want to be. That's how we get focused, okay? And when the brain detects this discrepancy, it reacts by throwing resources at it, attention, effort, information processing, willpower, right? Those get increased and we have a greater ability to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. So very interesting. I've seen this in my own life, but I never really had somebody spell it out like that until I read that. All right, so fall in love with the systems, right? Goals are good for planning your progress. Systems are great for making progress, okay? Goals provide direction and push you forward. Systems help you win always, right? Having a system is what matters. Committing to the process makes the difference. So follow the system. Are you going to go out of here more convinced that you need to follow? Yeah, the system is really, really critical. Okay, sometimes we think that we come to these meetings and we just want to catch that nugget, you know. There's some great nugget we're going to pick up. People will say to me many times, so what's the secret? You know, they'll pull you aside almost and they'll say, okay, nobody else is listening. Tell me the secret. <laughs> Probably has happened to you, right? And the secret is there are no secrets. I used to tell people, eat blue diamond almonds. That's the secret. 
Yeah, there are no secrets. That's the secret, right? So what we need to recognize is there's no secret. What we have to do is simply do more of what works. Okay, this is one of the first couple of slides. This is what, you know, boring. Maybe it's mundane, you know. It's not very exciting, right? Okay, if you want to accomplish something great, you have got to get focused. Okay, you've got to do those steps repeatedly. And there's going to be a lot of days when you're going to say, I don't know how much fun this is. Am I having fun? You'll try to convince yourself you're having fun, okay? But there's going to be days when you're going to say, this stinks, man. I'm not having that much fun right now. Those are the days that you need to double down, okay? I have always found in my business that if I am lacking fun, that the way for me to create fun is talk to new people. That is the funnest thing about the whole business. Everybody agree? Right. Sometimes you're receiving those phone calls from your dead downlines that don't know they're dead yet. Right? And they're just going through the motions, and you hang up, and you're like, ha, 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 I don't know if I can take one more phone call like that. You know, shoot me in the head. I am so sick of this. Right? That happens sometimes. And when you want to have fun, go talk to new people. And tap into that new energy and that new excitement, right? It's so fun to watch it happen. I... Um, Finally, I have one of my daughters who's really gotten engaged in the business. And you may have heard this little story on my Facebook Live last week that I did. But for those of you that didn't, you know, she's 30 years old. And I've tried for a long time to have her engage in the business. She's a master esthetician. She's got all the background. I mean, they went to all these Team Elite trips. I've taken them to every continent except Antarctica, and it's all been because of New Skin. They've lived an amazing lifestyle. It's all because of New Skin you would think new skin would get in there somewhere, right? <laughs> but they never saw themselves being able to do the business the way I do the business. They've always looked at me like this high-powered recruiter and, you know, coming at people with all this logic and business sense and all this stuff. And it's just like, sorry, no connection there. I'm missing that, right? And so they just would buy products for themselves or something, and that's all they ever did. So I signed her up eight years ago. So this has been kind of this eight-year thing going on, right? So on March 2nd, I was telling her what was going on with the toothpaste, and so she started brushing twice a day, and by March 9th, she had this really great before and after picture of her own teeth, and so she decided, well, I'll just post. I'll see what happens, right? So she decided to post, and she posted at 6 p.m., on the 9th of March, and the comments started coming. And at 1 o'clock in the morning, she was tired. She said, I'm going to bed with 101 tubes sold so far, right? She woke up the next morning. <laughs> yeah. She woke up the next morning with 30 more orders. And then she did her last call post and had about 30 more. So she ordered 170 tubes. When it arrived, she took her picture, and she said, we're swimming in toothpaste over here at our house. And she said, I hope you're going to like it as much as I do. And in the next three weeks, that turned into about 40 girls on her team, and uh, five LOIs, uh, 9,000 in volume in her group. So she became a one-month executive, right? So she was really excited about that. Yeah. So then she went into April, and she was nervous, you know, like, I don't know, I wonder if I can do 9,000 again. You know, we'll see what happens, right? So she finished April just a few days ago with about 103 girls on her team, 21,000 in volume, broke away three executives. She's one shy of a ruby, and she's having an incredible time. It's been pretty fun for me to watch this happen, right? Pretty cool, pretty fun. And so finally, I've got a daughter doing that, but not just once. She recruited her sister. <laughs> and her sister became an executive at the end of April, right? So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been fun. So
So I'm kind of watching this whole new way of the business happening. If you would have asked me a year ago if I would ever have believed it, I would have told you no. But I'm willing to learn new things, right? We've always got to be willing to change and learn, and I, I get it now. I understand, you know, the power of it. I see it, and I've watched it happen in a pretty significant way. And this has been going on now for about the last year or so, I would say. So these are all simple things, you know. They're just simple steps and simple processes, and we just need to stay focused and repeat them. We don't need to add new things. Sometimes adding new things, most of the time, adding new things is more of a distraction. And if we think one thing's really good, we think, well, if I can add two or three more of those things, that'll be better. And most of the time, that's not the case, right? Most of the time, it becomes more distracting, and we kind of get off course. And that's what happens. We're good at starting things. We start things up, and we go for a little while, and then we get bored, and then we get distracted, and all of a sudden, we don't finish what we started, right? Because now, we're moving over here to this new thing that seems more exciting to us, okay? And so we do that for a while, and then what happens is, you know, it takes work, and it takes consistency, and we get a little bored, a little tired of that, and we find something else that's really exciting, and so we add that to the mix, and that's where we start to spend time. And every time we do this, we kind of leave projects unfinished, okay? It's really important. I was reading through a lot of this material. Just to be a finisher in general, you know, do you have a pile of, of dishes in your sink at home that you never washed? Do you have a whole bunch of clothes laying on the floor? Do you have a bunch of beds that aren't made? You know, are your cars completely filthy and you never wash them? I admit, that's one of mine. <laughs> I don't think I ever have time to wash them. I'm always trying to work, okay? But, you know, these are things that we have in our lives where we get clutter. And anytime it's cluttered, we don't do very good. So it's good to finish all these little things that we start, you know, clean up our environment so we can have clear thoughts and we can focus on things. So we don't need new whiz-bang ideas. We don't need new, you know, some new prog program or process or system. We, we just need to do more of what already works, right? Just do more of what works, okay? We know what works. I've said many times to people, you know, they go, well, I've got this idea. And I said, no, 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 you know. We've done this so many times, okay? I've seen this movie a million times. I don't want to see the movie anymore, okay? Just do it this way. Just follow these steps. Make your first million our way. After that, you can make the second and third million any way you want, okay? By then, they'll understand. So that's what you do is just stick with what works. Okay. Now, let's talk about... Thank you. This is probably a boring talk. I'm just saying the same thing, right? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, about the rate of improvement. What does consistency do for us? When we stay consistent, you know, we're not winning any headlines, but we're just one foot in front of the other every day, right? I loved what Perry Walker said this morning when she was on stage, and she said, you've got to talk to three people a day. You know, it's a great thing. And I remember when I started almost 28 years ago, I was immediately aware that people were confused. And so I, I created something called the three threes. And I said, I want you to talk to three new people a day, do three three-way calls a day, and sponsor three people a month. And if you do those three threes all the time, there's no way you can miss. You will make it. You'll succeed. And what Perry said this morning, which was brilliant, right, was you can't do one and then seven and then zero and then three and then go on holiday, you know. You can't do it that way. It doesn't work. And why doesn't it work? Here's, here's the reason behind what she said, why it doesn't work to be inconsistent. Okay? What happens is consistency increases your rate of improvement. If I go do a presentation and I get some objections or questions right at the end of the presentation, then it, it alerts me to areas of my presentation that might be missing or might need to be filled in. I've got a hole in my presentation. I'm not addressing people's general concerns in the presentation and taking care of those right there. And I'm getting a lot of those coming back. When I first started traveling, in the first probably three months, I started just traveling everywhere. We had teams forming in the United States. And after every presentation, for years, I would ask people, okay, They'd go, that was a great presentation. I'd say, that's fine. I don't want to know what was good. I want to know what can I improve. What do you think were the places in the presentation that I can do better at? 
Okay, I'm seeking constructive criticism. Like, let me have it. Tell me where I suck, okay? Let me know so that I can take care of it. So that immediate feedback happens close enough to the presentation that I can learn how to change the presentation. If I do a presentation on Monday and I get some feedback, but I don't get the chance to give my next presentation till Saturday, there's five days in between when I got the feedback the first time and when I'm supposed to implement the feedback, but I have forgotten what the feedback was. So I couldn't implement the feedback because there was too much time between those events, okay? If I can do three presentations a day, five presentations a day, and I can get feedback, then the feedback loop can happen so much more quickly and I can improve so much more quickly, right? Does that make sense? That's what happens when you are consistent. So if you're talking to three new people a day, when we go out and invite people, inviting is an art, it's not a science. No one's ever written the exact book about how you invite. And it's, a, it's an art form because everybody's different. Every person's different. Every person's in a different place in their life, right? And so we have to listen. We've got to learn when we're inviting. We have to have all of these arrows in our quiver, all these answers to people's questions. And then we talk to them and then we listen and we find out what they're thinking. And then we pull out the right answer and we let them have it, right? And we give them that one and we can give them that one. You never become an expert at inviting if you only talk to one person a week. It's impossible. Okay, you've got to talk to multiple people a day. And if you do that, you will get to the point where you will know the answers before they even finish their questions. And you'll have such a powerful way to do it. You'll have probably five answers for the same question based on who that person is, what their background is, and what they've told you so far. And you can adjust on the fly to the point that you become a master recruiter. I mean a master recruiter, okay? And so that's what you want to do. You can get better and better and better at all of these things, right? So this creates velocity. The more you do it, the rate of improvement increases, and that velocity has that compounding effect, right, on your performance. That's what happens. Okay, we, we see this in the people that are consistent. This is that 1%, just finding that 1% improvement. Do you realize if you got 1% better every day, that at the end of a year, you'd be 37 times better than you were at the start of the year? 37 times better than when you started that year. I mean, that's amazing to me when you stop and think about it. But it's going to take consistency and focus and you working at that every single day, right? Results. If you're not consistent, you'll never get the rate of improvement you could if you were consistent. So you're going to go slower. And you might not just go, you know, on time, on a linear basis slower, you're going to go on a compounding basis slower. You know, you may look at people that can become a team elite in three to five years because they talk to five people a day, and you say, oh, I'm going to talk to one a week. It's not just going to take you 20 years. It might take you your whole life, okay, because you're going to have a hard time increasing that rate of improvement. Higher goals. Being consistent daily allows us to eat the elephant. That, Great big goal, right? We eat the elephant one bite at a time or one day at a time. Climbing Mount Everest one step at a time every day, and eventually we reach the summit, okay? And just realize that we have a tendency to overstate our consistency. People will be asked, you can ask somebody, well, how many times a week do you work out? Oh, yeah, I go to the gym five times a week. Well, it's understandable that there's some weeks that things happen, and you don't get to the gym five times, you might get to the gym three times or two times. But when people ask us how many times we go to the gym, we still say five times. <laughs> and so that's why it's important that we kind of keep a journal. We keep track of what we really do because the numbers don't lie. And lots of times we, we tell that story to ourselves enough, we believe our own lie. And we think we're really working really hard. And what we're working hard doing is thinking about our work instead of doing our work. Okay, so make sure you, you know, you think about not overstating that. Okay, so when it comes to finishing, rule number one is don't start so many things. <laughs> okay, if I was going to talk to you about probably the biggest waste of time that all of us have in our lives are all of the projects that we started and never finished. We never, ever took them to the finish line, and so all that effort, even 50% of the project, 60%, 75% of the project, goes wasted. 
because we never took it to the finish line, right? So this is the danger of trying to take on too many things, trying to start too many things. If you know that you're going to buckle down and you're going to get really focused on becoming a team leader of Blue Diamond, and then five neighbors call you to participate in a new charity event that's going to happen next week, you need to say, I'm sorry, but I'm already fully committed with my time. Okay, let me finish my current objective, and then I will come help you do your charity, okay? It might be two years, it might be three years, okay? But then I'll have a lot of time to help you with your charity. And so these things happen all the time in our lives. People are constantly calling you, making demands on your time. And believe me, the bigger your network gets, the more demands you're going to have on your time. When people are in the midst of creating their success in New Skin, What's your responsibility as the upline leader to that team member? Your responsibility is to give them your time, okay? That's what your investment is in this business. This, invest, this business doesn't take a million dollars. It doesn't take $100,000, okay? But it takes your time. And there's critical times when you have to be there for team members so that you can counsel them, you can do, you know, the three-way calls, you can do meetings, you can talk to a person through situations they're having, you can be there for the presentations, you're willing to travel, you're willing to set up impending events that have people focused on moving forward. So be realistic on how many things you can take on in your life and just realize that taking too many will distract your focus, right? Okay. So focus and persistence, we've kind of talked about this to wrap this up. You know, the most important skill is be focused and be persistent. If you get an email from me from my iPad or my phone, it says consistency and focus. It's right underneath my name. And I decided on those two words years ago. I learned years ago that just being consistent every day would win the race over 99% of the people because most people cannot do it. They cannot discipline themselves to stick to the task and be focused, right? And so this is like so critical that this happens. All right, we said this before, you know, some people want to just win the lottery, right? Have you ever followed the history of lottery winners and what happens to them in their lives? Because they short-circuited the process, and that's probably the only way I know of where you can just go right to the finish line, okay, it's not good. It's an ugly picture. Most of these people end up with the same amount of money two years later that they had before they won the lottery. Okay, in the process, they're divorced or their lives are broken, you know. They've had all kinds of these things happen to them. It's not a good way to get rich, okay. It's a really difficult way. You might think, well, it would be perfect. I would have the perfect life. No. You need to go through the process. And when you go through the process, then you appreciate what it takes, and you mature as a person, as a human being. You become a different person because you understand the sacrifice that's required, right? There's a great quote by John D. Rockefeller, the founder of Standard Oil, one of the first billionaires ever in the United States, clear back in the 1920s and 30s. And he said, sacrifice is what burns out the dross of selfishness from people. You know, we're all full of some kind of selfishness. And service and sacrifice takes that out of us. And it makes us a different person. It makes us a better person, a more compassionate person, a person that can relate to more people, that can help more people through their issues and their processes, right? And so it's an important thing when you start to see, you know, what happens to you. It's the process of doing it. I've never seen a business, and I have several other businesses, but I've never seen a business that allows us to serve other people. This model that we have in New Skin is servant leadership, okay? He among you that will be the greatest should be the least, right? The first will be the last. That's just the way it is in our business. It's servant leadership, okay? That's your job as a leader is to give your time to your team, to, to not ever ask them to do something that you're not willing to do yourself, okay? You've got to be willing to go the distance, to go the second mile with these people, right? and then it'll be successful. I think we did that, we did that, okay. Um, power of association, this is important. Start to think about your sidelines, your uplines, and your downlines. Start to think about the people that have the same goals and the same velocity that you wanna have in this business. If you make a commitment to work out, it's a lot easier to get up at six o'clock in the morning if you know you got five friends waiting at the corner for you to go to the gym than if it's just you trying to peel the mattress off your back and get out there and do it. 
right? Yeah, it's more important if you're associated with people that have similar goals and like minds and you're moving forward together, right? So do that. Choose associates who have the same goals you have. I've said to my children since they were very small, and I think you should repeat this to your children, and now I'm saying it to my grandchildren, you will become the average of your five closest friends. You'll become the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And you need to analyze who those people are in your life right now because if those people are not the ones that are, that are going the same direction you're going, that are trying to accomplish the same things you're trying to accomplish, then you need to change those people, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that you leave weaker or smaller people behind you, okay? We're going to help people. We're going to help them regardless. But for us to change, that inner circle has to pull you up. You cannot lift these other people unless you've got people that are helping to pull you up. It's really important that you understand that. And sometimes in the beginning, we are so weak in almost anything we look at. We can be so weak or so unknowledgeable or so uncommitted to things that if we associate with the wrong people, we're done. They'll take us down the wrong path, right? So, you know, we've all had experiences in our lives where maybe we associated with people that weren't the best for us, that took us down a path that wasn't the best, okay? And we've had those experiences. Let's not make those same mistakes again, right? We should learn from those things, and we should learn that we want to associate with people that are positive, that are moving forward, that are, you know, consistent in what they do and can inspire us to do these same things ourselves, this is a, a great poem, right? Stick to your task till it sticks to you. The beginners are many, but enders are few. Honor, power, play, power, place, and praise will always come to the one who stays. Stick to your task till it sticks to you. Bend at it, sweat at it, smile at it too. For out of the bend and the sweat and the smile will come life's victories after a while. Okay? All right, so in conclusion, to sum all of this up, nothing big is going to happen overnight. It doesn't. It takes time, okay? It just is part of, the, part of the, pro, the path or the process. For everything that will impact your life, you're going to have to work really hard. You're not going to accomplish anything great with casual efforts, right? Casual efforts result in casualties in our business, okay? They do. So no casual efforts. If you want to make it, you got to do it. It may take a few months or even years to achieve your goal, okay? Don't get too excited and don't get too discouraged. Just keep really consistent. I remember so many times people call me on the phone and they go, Oh, I got the biggest guy ever! Really? This guy's going to be so huge. I can't believe I got this guy. And I don't want to say to him, No, you don't. You don't have the biggest guy ever, sorry. Okay, good. Well, let's, let's talk to them. Let's see what they're going to do, okay? Let's see what they do. And, you know, people that are distributors when they're brand new, they get so excited when they recruit somebody and so down when somebody says no. It's like this huge roller coaster, you know, and you're just like, don't do the extremes. Just mellow it out, okay? No one person is going to make or break your business. Your success is going to be made up of lots of people over a very long period of time, right? So don't get too excited and don't get too depressed, okay? Just kind of stay in the middle, just keep it going, right? It's good to be a starter and a finisher, but if you have to choose, choose to be a finisher, right? Choose to show up every day until the job is done. Don't look back over the landscape and go, whoa, look how far I've come, <sighs> okay? Focus on what's still ahead, what's still in front of you to go up here, okay? That'll create that discrepancy in your mind. It'll keep you focused. It'll keep you moving forward so you can make it happen. Choose the pursuit that appears more boring on the surface but has rich rewards long term, okay? It's not always going to be like, you know, super fun, okay? Maybe if you're with Kenton, it'll be super fun all the time, okay? <laughs> But if you're with me, it's going to be pretty boring, okay? Because it's just consistently working through it on a regular basis all the time, okay? All right, choose to stick with the plan, even if it does not pay out immediately, right? It's going to take some time. But I'm telling you guys, when you become team elites and you have duplicated team elites in your downline, 
then you're going to have a sustaining business that will see you through the end of your days. I am more excited about New Skin today than I have ever been because I can see that we've got different components that we've never had before that are working really pretty well, pretty significantly, right? And so I know that we're going to be a $10 billion company. I know it, okay? And... Uh, I have a reputation for being a bit of a prophet in New Skin. You should know that. In fact, Kenton Worthington, when I sponsored him a couple of years after, he goes, you've got to come over to my house. And so I went over to his house and he had this old VHS videotape and he plugged it in his tape player in his huge theater in his house. And lo and behold, it was a videotape of me doing a presentation in 1989. And I was in somebody's basement in Utah, and there was like six people sitting on this couch, and I was standing in front of them, and I was telling them how great New Skin was going to be. And on the video, I say, last year, we did $45 million in business, $45 million. And I said, mark my words, someday, someday, we're going to do a billion dollars, a billion. And you can see this guy in the video camera frame, and he's sitting on the end of the couch, and when I said a billion, he goes, oh. <laughs> you could almost say, like, oh, right, right. I wish I could find that guy today. <laughs> so... Mark my words, we're going to be a $10 billion company. I don't know. I don't know how long that's going to take, but it's going to happen, okay? So choose to be consistent and choose to be a finisher, right? Finisher is the best. Thank you very much, guys. See you next time. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being here.